how do you make money <laughs> there are various ways how can someone come up with a good project idea there are many solution and there can be many solution you have to figure out how saturated the market is first they should focus is on providing value does the ui matter more than ui ux matters at some point of time you left the job mindset to wo shift kyu hua aur kaise hua when i was earning 1.5 lakhs a month i was a senior dev on the hmm. side i was making 3 4 times more than that for what level of money are you talking about here uh, sky is the limit man you tell me what they can be earning by being a indie hacker or building projects what i did was follow the same playbook it works you know the first thing is if you're straight out of college welcome manu how are you i am good sanskar how are you how are you doing doing well doing well so to cut things off can you tell the audience how do you make money <laughs> there are various ways i run my own company called eternity therein i build websites and web apps for clients that is one i also build templates which is a more recent addition to the eternity product and yeah these these are pretty much the two ways that i will make money with the other part is eternity constructions but that's a separate domain that's not related to it let's do one thing for today's conversation now let's take a road map for someone who wants to make money from coding but by some unconventional methods like not getting a job like building products selling services sounds good yeah sounds great first things first how can someone come up with a good project idea to build upon so i can tell you how i figure out good product ideas or project ideas for example if you take eternity ui into consideration uh, before eternity ui i was building something like tailwind ui but there itself i twisted some of the things because tailwind ui were the guys behind tailwind ui were following a specific design pattern and design system per se and they were creating components on top of it what i wanted to do was i wanted to give ad hoc components a set of components to people for general use so that was the edge that i had from tailwind ui but it didn't work uh, because i didn't have distribution i didn't know how to market my product i just focus on building more so i spent 4 5 months on building deciding on the tech stack managing user security and stuff like that but then hardly there were any users paying users we had a lot of users but not many of them were paying users so i had my learnings from that and i shifted on to next project and and i have a history of building a lot of products because that's what i like to do and moving from there this idea clicked because i also used to write a lot of blogs on how to create modular components how to add a design bit into your component so that they look better so what i did was i came up with the idea of giving out components which were really great and at that time chat scene was becoming really popular so i thought of giving a more modern approach to chat scene but i also used to write blogs at that time also so what i did was i wrote blogs and i started giving out components but then i saw that nobody is interested into blogs they only want components and that is when eastern ui came into into picture so my take away from that was uh, build what people want and most importantly build what you inherently want to build for example i have been building components for 5 6 years now and i've been building websites for over 7 years so i built on top of it and i started making more components but more niche down more specific to a particular set of audience and i marketed it marketed it aggressively so anyone who uses eternity they find it good they share it with the other people so i found my viral loop inside of that and it sort of picked up and then other creators they started uh, sharing eternity and it became more popular as time went by so take away is to scratch your own niche find problems around you i see a lot of problems around me and i try to fix them but currently i'm focused on eternity ui but when the problem comes with the finding a problem to solve there can be instances when you already have a solution for it yeah so in that case what would be your advice like build a different solution giving your own touch to it or yeah, you can just leave that problem and look for another one no if you really click with the problem i think you should build it because for example you have streamyard your streamyard over here there are other solution as well like obs and i'm not sure youtube live is also there 
there are many solution and there can be many solution you have to figure out how saturated the market is and how your product can provide more value than your competitor for example tailwind di was always there but there are also other ui libraries which are working which are there out in the market so it doesn't have to be unique per se but if it has an edge over the other maybe from price point maybe from ux point or maybe you are giving them something more than which is already there existing then your product can sustain in the market i mean it's more of uh, building till you get there so if your product is not unique that's not a problem but you'll have to figure out if you love your idea that much that you're ready to take on the big big challenges and big products out there so if we talk about college students and building projects there are two kinds of students theek hai one is jo ki banate hain seedha copy paste from tutorials and the other ones build on their own ab if we talk about the ones who build on their own isme bhi while building what should be their vision like main agar college student ki baat karu तो अगर वो प्रोजेक्ट पे काम कर रहे हैं तो शुड दे थिंक ऑफ मेकिंग मनी फ्रॉम इट या फिर जस्ट बिल्ड एंड लर्न फ्रॉम इट फर्स्ट इफ यू आर आई मीन इफ कॉलेज स्टूडेंट्स आर लिसनिंग टू इट फर्स्ट दे शुड फोकस इज ऑन प्रोवाइडिंग वैल्यू लाइक इफ आई एम बिल्डिंग अ प्रोडक्ट मेरे दोस्त के ये क्या काम आएगा फॉर एग्जांपल व्हेन आई वाज इन स्कूल देयर वाज दिस वेबसाइट एक्स वाई जेड आई फॉरगॉट द नेम बट व्हाट आई डिड इन माय आई एम सॉरी नॉट स्कूल कॉलेज वाज आई collected all of the previous year question papers and i put it up on a website so that other people right before an exam could download uh, previous year question papers and they could study from it or solve it so that was one problem that i solved there were already existing solutions for it but mine was a little better from the ui perspective and it was more easy to use so that was one uh, product that i built back then so first is providing value give the user something so that they'll stick to your product for example the uh, sharing thing so everyone needs question papers right Pre- previous year question papers what was asked they, they might get some agent to the exams so they have to focus on studying and for that i provide them value is what i provide them question papers so think from providing values perspective once you provide value once you have decent amount of audience you can later on think about how to monetize them but if you solely think from the perspective of making money and you are doing it alone with no funding since you are a college student it will be a little difficult for you to do it mm-hmm. no that makes sense but if we talk about charging for a project or a product let's say so in that case does the ui matter it does ui more than ui ux matters for example there is jira and there is linear i've used jira and i've used linear i would pick linear any day of the week over jira because of the ui because of ux because of the all the keyboard shortcuts that i get it's more easier and more feels more intuitive so jira was there since a long time it's back by atlassian but linear is a is a new product and many people have used linear and they have the same point of view so ux plays a lot more role than ui but don't leave out ui for good focus on the ui as well because combined ui and ux will give your product the edge that you are talking about and while building how can someone let's say in college get feedback for their project share it with friends share it with your faculty members i mean in every college i i think there is a placement cell there is an e cell i was a part of e cell in my college so you can always get people to check out your product offline and if you can't do that there is always social media you can post your product on twitter reach out to people over dms get feedback feedback i mean if someone reaches to me to get a feedback on their product i almost certainly always reply and give them a way or two to improve it so that because i never had one back then and now i feel that it's like my responsibility to help the next generation so yeah faculty members your friends or pers- take any person and just ask them that i'm building this and can you give me some feedback on top of it the better version would be if the person is into your same domain for example if you're a software engineer and you're building products for developers ask developers give them free access for your product ask them to use it in in i mean and you can get feedback use them for free and they'll give you feedback for free coming back to building the project do you think the technology that someone builds on that also affects the usage in the longer run now it depends Uh, why you are building that product number 
if you're a college student, you're not a senior, you can pick any tech stack that you want to learn. That is also a good way of practicing that stack. Pick that stack and build something on top of it. And you'll learn a lot about that framework or that language. Other thing is, if you're trying to get jobs into that specific tech stack, for example, if you're looking for jobs in React, build a product with React so that you polish your skills as well. And once someone, some recruiter or some senior CTO guy looks at your product and they ask you about the tech stack, and they are looking for that specific per, uh, person for that tech stack, you'll maybe you won't even have an interview round. Maybe they'll just have a discussion with you about your projects and you'll get hired directly because you have proof of work. You've built a product in that tech stack, which the people are looking for. And they know that you have built it because the code is open source or even if it is not, they'll have a discussion with you in the interview process, but it will cut down on your interview rounds for sure. In a startup, I'm talking about not talking about fangs. I'm not the best in the ESA. So, it depends what is the purpose of you building side product. You want to get hired, you want to make money, or is it you want to learn something? I have two questions from this answer of yours. First one is, what should be someone's vision while building a project? First is providing value. And the, the first vision should be providing value. Once you provide value, you've cracked the audience because audience comes with value. The second thing is you have to find a way to monetize it. There are various ways of monetizing a product once you have real users using it. You can maybe sell it to some other companies who are looking for acquisitions. For example, acquisition.com is there and acquire.com is there. You can list your product there. It gets acquired. Or the better thing which I feel is if you don't want an exit from your product, keep on building on top of it so that one day you can charge subscriptions or lifetime licenses for a product. For example, I am building this Eternity UI kit. So it will be priced at some X dollars and I have distribution now. So people, so now is the time to monetize. It's been a year of me building this. So after a year, I'm thinking of monetizing it and that to not priced very high because I'm still new in the market. So the thing is providing value, monetizing it later down the road and making money comfortably, but you don't have to just stop. Once you make a certain amount of money, you'll have to still keep on building on top of it keep on improving it, keep on adding new features or create a separate product if you want to be into the same domain and sell it as a standalone product itself. So there are various ways of making money once you have an audience and once you have distribution. So the first thing would be to build that, build audience, build, make people talk about your product and market it aggressively. Be very vocal about your product, be shameless when you're promoting meet someone new, talk about your product with them, ask them to check it out, stuff like that. I, I did it in the past. I do it. I do it. Before coming on to building distribution, I want to quickly ask you, you mentioned in the previous answer that at some point of time, you left the job mindset and started building the products for selling those products itself. So why did shift and how did it happen? I was earning 1.5 lakhs a month. I was a senior dev and on the hmm. side, I was making three, four times more than that. And I was freelancing at that time. Okay. So I used to be very conservative when it came to building something of my own. I was into this dilemma of job security that job security hai to I have a lakh hai to main khush hoon. Safe hai, secure hai, senior position hai, kaam nahi karna padta. But then I saw the upsides of building a product and having it pay a lot more than my job and I was doing it simultaneously with my job because I was in a senior position. I was doing work from home. So most of them won't have this luxury. I have this because I'm working from home and I didn't have to go to office and I was already having this builder's mindset because I've been building products since college days. So what I thought was if I have a runway of, let's say one year, I'd quit my job and do this full time. Once I quit my job, there was no safety net for me. I had to do it or otherwise I would have tanked really bad. So I went all in. I went all into Eastern UI. I went all into my service business because at the time of job, I was maybe handling one freelance clients at a time. After job, I was doing it like five, six, eight at a time. But that is another headache that you don't want to deal with. But yeah, that mindset shifted once money came into picture. And that too, for a buffer of three, four months, I mean, money was coming in from my freelance business and from my job as well. But still, I had this four months gap after four, four or five months, I left my job. 
Right, right, right. And see, it's pretty clear that you might have a winner product, but even then, if you don't have distribution, you won't be able to make money from it. So what would be your advice on building a distribution for someone in their college or even a recent graduate for that matter? Easiest way is uh, sharing, sharing things on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on social media, write content, write anything about the stuff you learn, write blogs. For example, if you've read, a, if you, if you've seen a YouTube video, you found something new, write something. Because once you start to write something, there is one, you'll get good at it. Number two, you'll have an audience. Once you write organic Google, I mean, organic blogs, and also you can write for free code camp, by the way, just send them a mail and show them some of your work. They'll accept you as a writer. And free code camp has really good distribution. So they have like 10 million monthly page views onto their website. And if you write it, your blog will get traction. They also give you a backlink at the bottom. So your profile will also get traction. That is what I followed also some time back. I stopped writing blogs. Now I might write in the future, but not now. So write a lot, share, not even write. If you can publish videos as well, that will be another good thing to do. I've seen, I, I, I mean, I see a lot of first year, second year students doing this now, which is crazy. They're really good with what they do. And they're also sharing it with the world. Once you share, once you provide value, distribution comes to you. And if your content is well taken, and if you take feedback and improve, you will have an audience down the line. Obviously, if someone knows the benefits of sharing and providing free value, they will do it. But let's talk about those people who are conservative, who feel that free will share free value. So let's talk to them and tell them the advantages ki are if you share for free, then all these things can be unlocked. I mean, don't think of it as sharing it for free. Think of it as an investment. For example, if I release 70 components on Eternity UI, what will I get? I will get people talking about it and later down the road, maybe after six months, maybe after eight months, it will be picked up by some founder who will say, I like your work. You have shown consistency. Your code is out there. I can see it. You're a better coder. I'm ready to give you a job. I'm, I'm ready to give you a job or I'm ready to buy your product or I'm ready to buy your services. So you, what, what you did here is sort of removed all the confusion from the founder's perspective and you have built trust. So he doesn't have any confusion about your tech skills. He doesn't have any confusion about your background. And he has trust because you have a product which you've been building consistently. So for now, if you're building it for free, what you're doing is you're building trust. You are building consistency. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to invest your time and energy into this, which will later on have huge, huge benefits, which you cannot even imagine. So Think of it as an investment. Don't think that you're giving it away for free. And even if you're not giving it away for free, you can make a paid product as well, but don't expect humongous uh, amount of people using it at day one because payment is a huge friction for people to use your product. Email is one friction, email password, and then payment is a huge friction. So my products all are no emails, nothing no payments, nothing, all are free, free to use, free to share. What I get is traction. What I get is audience. What I get is people talking about my product so that I can sit on a podcast like this and talk about this. That is what uh, helps you in building your channels. You mentioned key having an email and a password and charging is a friction, right? So can you also share some best practices or hacks for that matter? That if someone project use karwana hai kafi ek wider audience se, so they can use these best practices for example i also have a product called algo churn wherein people can come and practice for front end interviews it's called algochurn.com now there is sign up and login flows there for you to save your progress for only that purpose email and email sign up authentication system is there but if you have an interview tomorrow and you just want to practice, come on to the platform, explore from those 20, 30 problems, solve it. We've got an ID, we've got stuff like that. And you will get something in return is what you have practiced and you'll be better prepared for your interviews. Now, there is no login flow if you want to try it for free. Product is free. 
you don't have to even sign up for uh, uh, for the product to use what people generally do is <clears throat> if they want the user to use the product they'll have that initial friction of sign up login i mean it's uh, if it is absolutely necessary for your product to have that by all means do it there is no way around it but if you want to get more eyeballs for some specific set of products keep it open keep it open for people to use so there is i mean make it as easy as possible for them for your product to use so that you get some feedback you get some traction you get some social media attention <clears throat> otherwise if it is absolutely necessary you, you have no way around it just go ahead and implement it right can you share some examples of projects you have seen are really good or like even if you have built them for that matter just so that the people get an idea of what we're talking about one one good product that i keep on talking about is called pika.style so if you want to have really beautiful screenshots onto your twitter post so for example i take a screenshot of this web page and i want to add a really fancy background or tilt the image or do stuff like that there is pika.style you can do it through that it is free for now it is free with watermark initially it was free without the watermark as well so that is how we built how rishi built his audience was there was this only product which will give you those screenshots for free without the watermark and now his product is doing what 4000 mrr the last i checked also has a screenshot api built on top of it and that is something that i really use all the time so if i want to share share a screenshot i'll take a screenshot upload it on pika it will post it on my twitter the other is all my product videos are through screen dot studio so what screen studio does is if i take a video of this or if i record from screen studio for that matter it will add background it will add mouse move effects it will have automatic zoom in zoom out effects so your product videos become really good and they stand out so that is another product and it has a really good viral loop like i said uh, i mean i've talked about it in one of the other podcasts as well every time i share a video with screen studio there are at least 20 people asking for the website through which i built it so the product markets for itself so and they are doing what 5500 k mrr or something so really good product solo solo founder so manu how does someone go about monetizing their pro- product there are various ways like i said if you take an example if you have if you've got a ui library give some components for free once you have people once your product is mature like say 6 7 months add paid components or pro components wherein you give more value but still you'll have to give a lot of free value for people to talk about it so that is one channel monetizing digital products one time licenses other is services for example there is this new uh, not new but the scheduling tools which are there for example i use typefully for twitter what it does is i write my tweets and it schedules onto twitter it gives me a lot more access to other tools you can create these scheduling products as well here what you can do is you can also integrate ai for content ideas and you can charge a monthly subscription from people let's say give them 14 days free again for them to try the product get a hold of it get logged into it if they like it they'll pay so you have subscription models going out there the other thing is services business which will already be there it will always be there because it totally depends upon the quality of your work you deliver for example eternity labs is a services business as well right we build websites for clients but there are many software agencies out there who are doing the same things with like 100 <clears throat> times less fees than we charge so we we are game on top of quality so we provide really good websites really good support we are there for our clients we make sure that the product out there is really good we help them i have my own set of skills and knowledge which i provide to the founder advices stuff like that so services business will always be there you can always sell websites to people people or people will always be there looking for websites but then you'll have to have quality in that because that market is really tough to crack you have to be really good at your craft and you have to provide value you have to put in a lot of time and efforts no holidays nothing if you want to make that level of money but that is a difficult market to crack but if you think you have skills you've got the right set of tools with you 
by all means do it man there's there's a lot of lot of work out there so to name a few rules or three that i can think of what what level of money are you talking about here uh, sky is the limit man you tell me <laughs> i started charging 2000 dollars for a website when no i started charging 10000 rupees since my college days my first big one was 500 dollars on upwork then the next one was 3000 dollars on upwork the next was 4500 and then i started a eternity with 3000 a month subscription now it is 5000 a month subscription and websites are 12500 one time still increasing so you can increase your rates at any time if you are building your own product but you have to give that that quality as well so sky is the limit you can what i'm trying to do right now is what i already have done is i also have a team working with me people vetted by me so clients are comfortable i delegate some of the work to them i can take on more clients and i can raise my rates i also have digital products templates which are doing really well by the way even more than my service business surprisingly so digital products because you have to build them one time and it, you'll reap the benefits later a lot and in service business you have to put in a lot of your time so you're selling time for money here you're selling your product for money which is better in my opinion so once you have some brand of yourself you can make money in n number of ways for example from youtube you have a brand of yourself tomorrow you'll get sponsorships you'll get invited to speak at organization i mean conferences and stuff so once you have people using it using a product or talking about you you can make money and once you have that sort of traction with you you yourself will start getting ideas of how you can monetize your thing and you will have more chances of error to sort of play the game to build build something right. first the, the starting is to build something mm. also manu it's very important to realize ki if a product is not working right so do you have a list of pointers or a sort of a checklist to make sure ki agar hum product banana hai to it should tick off these things ya fir at what point do you decide ki this product is not going to work and you stop working on that first is building what you like so that you can do it for a long time for let's say at least 5 6 months you can do it so pick something that you like doing or like building be it the tech stack be it the idea the second is the the biggest signal is you are not getting feedback and once you start getting feedback the feedback is very generic so for example read a book there is called a mom test the mom test the name of the book is the mom test that guy will teach you how to correctly ask ask for feedback and how to actually ask the right set of questions from people when you're talking about your product for example if i'm building a strategy ui and if i ask my mother how do you like the product she'll say it is really good you're the best stuff like that every mom would say that but if you ask a cto of a company or or some software or a senior software engineer and you are building a product for engineers or developers and you ask them for specific set of feedbacks like did you like the ux flow what is the what are the two things that i can improve for you to pay for this product questions like these you will get genuine feedback and if you are not getting that if you are getting really generic piece of things the next step would be to work on your product more try to add three four more features which you think will initially help you get that traction or get that boost amongst other peers if it is not working give it maybe 2 or 3 months if it is still not working maybe pivot pivot from that idea for example a certainty blogs my product was give them blogs and give them components blogs didn't work they were finding it hard to copy the component because everything was mixed up everything was in one file i start i did it for let's say 2 months 3 months and then i realized no can't work together i had to pivot i had to just give components once i started giving components people were getting confused between a sternity and a sternity ui one is a service business one is a product business so i had to ask sort of questionnaires into my intercom chat like why are you leaving and what is your feedback i got some or two really good feedbacks and that is when i pivoted from components onto sternity.com/components to ui.sternity.com once i did that everything was falling into place and then i started building from there 
so yeah initial feedback talk to people read books the mom test is a really good book if you want to validate your idea ask the right set of question to the right set of people if you are asking family members or if you are asking anyone from the tech community as well ask them to be brutal about the product don't ask them to only highlight the positives for that matter don't even ask for the positives you know the positives ask them what is annoying them ask them what they are not feeling for example i have analytics on to my website i see a person entering a person going to the pricing section click, clicking the cta button and not buying so i have that funnel going on once that happens i have a set of people who don't do that then i try to reach out to them why what can i improve how can i help you how what would make you buy this and stuff like that so you have to have some analytics as well in place like i said the right set of tools to help you figure out if it's going to work or not but if you're just out of college just started building for the love of god just build forget about feedback or forget about if it will work or not build it I mean, if you make two or three mistakes you'll eventually figure out what's working and what's not working but you will have to struggle initially be it anything be it dsa or be it product building be it any business you'll have to have that struggle factor coming in so that you learn from it i can sit here and speak all day but your actual learning will come from you only when when you hit a hit a wall or your wall i mean your back is against the wall and then you will realize this isn't working and then you'll have to have some other thing going on that is when you learn that is when the question of stacks goes out of the window and that is when the question comes what people really want and how you're going to make money even if you are a php developer and you don't want to learn react build stuff with php just build it there are many examples of people making crazy amount of money with php i mean if you look peter levels he's just building things with php and he's the most respected indie hacker or solopreneur out there he's not making website with next or react or some view next next whatever or other fancy framework he's building php because he knows php he knows php he built product with php whatever if you if you already know something build something with it just build it so manu just to give the audience an idea of what they can be earning by being a indie hacker or building projects because we are we have talked about how you can sort of practically replace a job with with these sort of things right so can you give them an idea ki if you work hard for 3 4 years this sort of money monthly you can be expecting if you are an indie hacker you know the first thing is if you are straight out of college Uh, and what i did was follow the same playbook it works get a job first get a job first learn the craft first if you think you are the best out there you might not be right always because i felt that i knew react a lot but once i was into a job i came to realize that i knew nothing that was used and i had to sit down and work on my basics a lot so job helps you in that on site job that to an on site job wherein you'll get senior people senior mentors mentoring you put in the hours initially think of it as you're building your own career you're building your own set of skills even if you have to work a lot just work a lot so that you build your own craft and once you're very comfortable once you attain certain level of skills keep on building products on the side and that is given like you're you're into a job but don't let go of the builders mindset from that build products bit something on the side small tools to help some other people something which can be used build it and once you're comfortable once you i mean over the years you'll also acquire skills right put in those skills into your side projects and figure out this money making scheme from i mean i mean figure out this money making scheme at the same time when you're in the job as well so don't leave your job because you think your idea is the best and uh, you'll make the next big thing out there first make 10 dollars from the internet from your side project after 10 make 100 after 100 make 1000 after 10000 i mean after 1000 make 10000 once you make 10000 and once your side project is making thrice the amount of money from your job then think about leaving the job world 
even then you won't be sure if you want to leave the job that you are in because after 2 3 years into the job you are comfortable people know you you might be in the senior position you are working less on to the product which is there and you are mo- working more on to your own thing that can be one scenario but still get a job is what i would recommend don't think that i'm straight going to get into product building and i won't have a job ever get a job build something for them build something for yourself and then eventually you'll figure out you'll you'll have maturity by the end of 2 or 3 years think long term as well after the end of 2 or 3 years you'll also realize what you need from your own life if you want to continue job good for you if you don't want to good for you so you'll have your answers after you have some credibility within you so don't think about just building get a job first and pick it up from there Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much Manu for joining me today here having this conversation. I enjoyed it and I hope the audience must have learned something from it. Thank you so much. Thanks thanks Sanskar. Thanks for having me.